Let's look at slashes now. Slashing will occur when there's an actual edge is present. Unlike shanks that by definition are improvised poking weapons, anything that has an edge can be used to slash. Now this is really important and you need to have this kind of training because statistically, if you have some kind of improvised weapon where a edge is present, the attacker is 80% of the time likely to attack with a slash. If you can't defend the slash, you're in real trouble. Let's look at some of the defenses. All right, let's look at slashing attacks. Obviously, if you're dealing with a box cutter, he really only has a slashing component. But statistically, it's important to realize that with an actual knife, maybe a piece of cutlery, or somebody's able to get access to a real knife, although that's not really a spontaneous attack, even under those conditions where you have a proper fixed blade, 80% of the time the attack is still a slash. It's important to understand that most martial arts schools spend a lot of time on the thrust, but many of them, including Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, did not have adequate slashing defenses, which statistically is way, way more common. Now, if he is close enough to slash my neck, again, I'm probably going to be affected by the flinch reflex, and I'm going to have to cover it the same way as I do a punch or a glassing. As we talked about, many people, some uh, studies quote as high as 70% of people who've been attacked by edge weapons didn't realize that, that they were attacked by knives or edge weapons. That's really high. So once again, I may simply not know that there is a knife in his hand. The angle that it travels at is very similar to a punch or to a glassing. So it's important to make sure that you optimize your flinch reflex. You need to bury that chin down as far as it can go and you need to bring those shoulders up as high as you can go and really squeeze your head in between your shoulders and cover this area. For a punch, you're covering the chin, which is the worst place to get hit. And for a slash, which you may not know the difference under the conditions that we talked about, particularly if we add poor light to that. So when he slashes at me, this alone can save me. You can see that he opened up my shoulder, but it wouldn't have hit my neck. Now, if I had the more common flinch reflex, oh man. I just gave it to him and that's my head rolling along there. So this flinch reflex alone can save me. It traveled up my shoulder, hit my head, would open my scalp up. They can stitch me back together. But my chin was down, my shoulders are up. Now when I add my arm position to this, again we have a pretty functional defense. And if I have any inclining that this was an edge weapon, man I want that combat Osotagirian bust his head like a melon on the cement because you don't want him to have another chance to stick that in you or slit your, slit your throat. The problem is, unlike a punch, which an untrained person needs the distance to gain momentum, a slash can be done from the wrist. It's traveling the same kind of arc, but it's tighter and faster. That's when this kind of flinch is going to save your life. I may not have time to get my hands up. And again, we cover it the same way. Overhook this arm, get in tight, clothesline him, or smash on his chin. You can get your thumb in his eye at the same time as I move his head, and then kick that leg out. And That's the same kind of way that your flinch response is going to force you to, uh, to defend against a slash high. All right, now we're going to look at the slash to the body. We were talking about how a flinch reflex can either help you or hurt you. And an optimized flinch reflex can be the difference between life and death when it comes to a slash to your throat. Now let's look at the body attack. I'm not sure if I would go as far as to call it a flinch reflex, but it's very common and I've seen it again and again when I look at uh, live surveillance footage and real fight video of someone who's been hit in the body, usually with an implement or a punch or something when kids are playing around. They have the same kind of flinch to cover their body. Their hips might suck back a little bit and their arms cross. Using that same kind of instinctive flinch response, but this time against the body, we're going to build a defense around that, what I call a crossada, which is just a crossed arm. It's really efficient and through these studies and live, full speed, full contact simulations that we've done, it's by far the most efficient slash defense that I've come across and designed in all my years in the martial arts. So the idea is, as he slashes, I'm going to use two hands to defend. Him.